A couple of months ago, I did, a, or a few months ago, I did a video about GIMP, a graphics program, just showing you very quickly how to resize an image. Since then, I've got quite a few emails and PMs, etc., asking me various questions about the program, what it was, what it can do, how to do certain things. So I thought we'd do a short series of videos all about making designs in GIMP. Now, this is only going to be about making designs in relation to glass painting. Other people may find it useful, but that's what I'm concentrating on. Uh, there are other videos, sites, etc., which will give you a lot more information about the other capabilities of GIMP. It can do an awful lot. But in these videos, we're going to concentrate on making designs from scratch, uh, altering existing designs, resizing designs, that sort of thing. So, why GIMP? Well, it's a very powerful program, probably too powerful for what we want to use. And uh, we certainly won't be using all of the features, but it is a really good program. We cert certainly won't run out of options. Secondly, and perhaps more importantly, it's free. What more could you ask? It really is a great free program. I, I can't praise it enough. And all the people who put time and effort into making it. It is available for Windows, it is available for Linux, and it is also available for Mac OS. So that should cover just about everybody. Right, let's go to the site, download it, and install it to our computers. In this first video, we're going to show you how to install the software, uh, setting it up, op opening a new image, adding some lines, and saving it. And I think that'll be plenty for the first video. Just a quick note, you will see at times uh, my cursor makes this pattern. That's because I'm clicking and I've set it to do that so it will show you more clearly where I'm clicking. And also if I push the keyboard, you said immediately moving the thing, let's try a different thing there. You'll see down here at the bottom, it will actually show you what keys I'm pressing. Okay, let's get on and download the program. Simply go to the GIMP website. Um, it's here, gimp.org, and I will put that address around. When you've gone there, hit the download button. Now, it should bring up the Windows version for me, and it's the download GIMP directly, this orange button here, which you want. Um, if you've got a different operating system, there's options for Linux and OS X up there. And there are multiple languages down here if you want it in a different language. Okay, so you've downloaded it. And as normal with any program, you double click on it. You find it in your downloads folder, sorry, double click on it and it will install. So let it install. Now open it up for the first time sometimes when you open it up for the first time it looks like this completely sort of one two three separate windows now some people like that arrangement particularly if you've got a dual monitor set up but for most of us that's not how we expect a program to be easily solved just go here windows click down to single window mode and there we have it, we're into a normal single window program. The setup is quite easy. It can just be used directly as it is. However, there are a few options you might like to look at in edit preferences. Um, the main things are the theme. Now you can see I've got quite a dark theme there, but there are a couple of other options. I quite like the dark one, I find it easier on my eye. And also the icons, if you look at the top left up here, there are the icons. Uh, let's see if we can just zoom in there a little bit. So if you look at those icons on the top left, and you can change it changes all the icons on the page really.
unfortunately they're too dark in the dark theme you'd have to use a different theme I like the nice simple color ones we have got the old color ones which is from a previous version of GIMP but I like those and those are the only two things I tend to change there are lots of other options in here and do explore them if you want but I'm just going to make those icons a little bit bigger I say I can say okay to that and I can just resize this a little bit and there we go that makes it much more manageable so those are the only setup things I tend to do in it um, but do have a look at the others if you want opening a new image is very easy file new now we can set our own width and height here whatever we want I suggest taking the resolution down to 72 if it's not already there that's because we're just doing a rough design a resolution of 72 is fine 300 you would use for photographs etc so do keep it down it'll save you ink you can set your dimensions here or you can select one of the templates now I think I'll select the A4 template but that has put up the resolution and I'll take it back down to 72 so here we've got the size in millimeters you can change the size you use we can use centimeters you can use inches etc etc and here you've got the resolution the resolution only needs to be very low for design work or for this type of design work click OK and there's our new image you can open more images if you want and they'll all come across the top let's do another new one this time I'll open an A5 sheet but again I'm going to take it down to 72 if you don't understand about resolution don't worry we will look at it more in depth later on now, I know those look the same size but if you look at the bottom of the screen at the percentage of zoom they're different if I were to put that one up to 100% there we go that's a better comparison of the, the two sizes now I'm just going to open an old image because I want you to see this is a photograph I want you to see some of the navigation now you can zoom in by using this zoom key down here we can make that 300% but it's a lot easier if you've got a mouse with a wheel then you can use that by holding control and using the mouse wheel to zoom in and out just like this so it's the mouse wheel with the control button now the mouse wheel will also let you go up and down if you've got no button selected so up and down like that and also if you hit shift it'll let you go left and right so zoom in left and right up and up and down so that's how you can navigate around your image or you can use the grab bars right so let's just close that one down we'll go to the top to do that close that one we'll close that one and we'll just have this one image left right let's add some basic lines and we'll do those using the pencil tool so if you go across to the top left and you just select that's a paintbrush that's a pencil we'll select the pencil tool and then we'll go to our sheet and it picks up the color so I go back here and it does pick up this color the top color 
So we're going to have black. You can switch those round. You can choose a new color. But just for designs at the moment, we'll stick to black. So it's on black or put it on black on the top one. Or down here, I can ch change the size of the pencil and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. A little bit smaller still. And then go back to my image, just hold the button and draw. The other thing you can do is click once, hold shift and you get a line. Try that again, click once, hold shift, you get a line. Keep holding shift and you can do multiple lines. So you can do it freehand or click, hold shift and do straight lines. And let me just clear that. One more thing to add with lines, if you want to use guidelines, just click in the ruler. Now that blue line there is just a guideline. You can move it, we select this tool here, and you see it goes red, and then we can move it. If it goes red, we can move it. But that is just a guideline. And again, you pick them up by going to the ruler, left clicking, another guideline you can have as many as you want I'll go to the top and pick another one up now if we go into view we've got show guidelines on which is important and we've also got snap to guidelines that means if you get close you will snap to it so let's go back to the pencil tool Go back to our piece and I'm going to click on that intersection of the guidelines there. Hold shift. And you'll notice it, it sort of snaps to where you want it to go. There we go. Nice straight line box. And so you can do that as many times as you want. You can bring down as many guides. And this is great for making frames etc. Obviously I had no guideline there so it wasn't straight. Control Z will undo anything you've done. Bring down another guideline. There we go. So that is how to do, whoops, click there first. How to do lines in GIMP. I think that's almost enough for this first video. Please do go back through it a couple of times because I did go through things very quickly there. They are things we'll look at more later. We won't spend too much time on colour, um, basically because these are, we're using this for designing, so it's all going to be plain line colour, or mostly, unless you want to see a colour copy of your design. So to save, there are two ways of saving. If you're saving because you want to work on this again, just click File and for the first time save as and from then on you can hit save. Now that's fine but it does save it in GIMP's own format. It saves with it all the information you need to carry on working. If you've got layers, guides, etc. it saves all of that. However, you can't open that in any other program. 
if you're going to want to open it in another program or you're going to want to put it on the internet let's say you should export as now when you export as you can export in a lot of very common file formats so I'm going to put this on the desktop I'm going to call it test which I put up here and I'm going to save it in JPEG format which is JPG I spot that wrong so that won't work JPG click export it should give me some options for the quality of the export I want take that up to 95 and I will export it now that should be there it is on my desktop and you should open be able to open that in any image viewer if you're going to want to carry on working on it you can save a GIMP copy of it as well that has its own format XCF still called test and we'll put that on the desktop as well and save it and they are that's as there as well but that one can that one can only be opened by GIMP but saves all the information all the guidelines if you've got layers color palettes whatever information you're using it will save it for you obviously that doesn't happen with the proper image there it's opened in an image viewer so that's two different ways of saving it okay I think that's plenty of information for now we will look at more obviously in the next lesson go through this again go through it a couple of times there was a lot of information in that but very quick way to open a new file and to start creating your designs thank you for watching in the next uh, video in this series we'll look at creating shapes importing other images and layers in the meantime please either visit our facebook groups or don't forget to subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon so you get notified when we have new videos Happy crafting.